and we're up and running. Thanks ever so much for joining us this evening, uh, John Travers, um, to share, you know, your your outlook and reflecting on, you know, your um, your achievements, etc. I've only been in Ireland for probably just over three years now, and uh, in that time, I've seen your name coming up at the top of a few national championships. But uh, I, I guess, like, like many people of talent, you know, you've come through from a young age group and you've been you know, picking things up for a while. Do you, do you want to just elaborate on how your career has gone? Yeah, well, I suppose I actually, well, first off, thanks for having me on, but um, I suppose I actually took up athletics quite late. Um, I was doing the, I don't know if you've heard of the Goshka Awards in schools. Um, so I was fifth year school, nearly, it was 2007, I suppose, geez, I'm sounding old here, um, when I was doing the Goshka Awards. So we'd take up a sport there and I was doing everything and anything before that anyway and kind of dropped the pen. So it's kind of from there that I actually took it up and it was funny, we were only supposed to keep it for six months and sure, I didn't really race in the first six months, but I enjoyed it, so kept it going. And sure, since then I've gone on, I've gone to European Championships, I've gone to World Junior Championships and I suppose probably one of my best results is probably I finished seventh in the European Indoors. Um, in 2015 um so i've had quite a quite a few international caps good few national titles and stuff like that over the various distances so it's great um not done yet hopefully uh, i think i've still plenty more to come now i'm young in terms of athletics so we look we'll see where the next couple of years go but so far we've had a, a good uh, a good foundation block excellent excellent and um um thinking back to, to, to when you were kicked off uh, back in 2007 um, um, what age would you be then and um, at what age did you realise that you could make it as an international athlete uh, and compete well I was I was 16 going I was I 16 going 17 when I took it up it was to late 2006 so it was sorry I would have been 16 going 17 yeah um, and to be honest, I didn't, I didn't really take it serious for a number of years, even though it was gas, I suppose. My, my first time I nearly made a team was only in 2008. Um, I nearly made the, the World Junior Cross team. I finished eighth up in the Nationals, which was a shock to me. So I think that was kind of the first time I realised, Jesus, you know what, I could, I could definitely do something in the sport here. Um, I've always been one of them, very modest. I wouldn't say I'm confident in myself or overconfident, um, but I wouldn't hold myself too high until I'd be the type now. I'd be like, well, I am where I am. And I'm not going to be any better until I get better kind of thing rather than looking going, oh, I'll run 30 seconds quicker, 40 seconds quicker. So, look, I suppose I was realistically, oh, I'd say I was 23, 24 before I really kind of looked at this going, right, this is a long term thing. I suppose when I started making the European indoors and stuff like that, it was a, an eye opener for me. Um, 2010 was probably my best year. I came out of nowhere and ran that 355 mile yeah. um, and 337.15. So that's kind of. Look, I knew before then I was going to be half decent, but I didn't think I'd quite get to that level, especially over that distance. Yeah. Um, I kind of stagnated for a couple of years. I kind of, I was in and out and not in and out, but I wasn't really taking it too seriously. I suppose it's only really when I was properly with Jerry. I'd say the last four years that I've really, really committed 100% and not skipping runs and not trying to do things much better diet-wise and things like that. So um, I suppose I'm finally starting to mature a little bit. Love it. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that gives us a, a, a nice background to... Uh, and um, certainly thinking about the next few questions. So thinking about when you first started and perhaps when you were working with the, your, your first coaches and when, when you're doing your running, what kind of processes um, of training or areas of training were you focusing on, uh, particularly, I, I guess, at the ages of 17 and then again at 20? And I think you've said you've really cracked on since you started working with Jerry. So, so what kind of yeah. processes have you been working on? Well, to be honest, for the first the first year to two years, I was actually getting coached by a guy, Willie Dunn, who's still around the club now. Um, and I was literally, I was training on a Tuesday. I do a, a pyramid session. I was on a 300 meter grass track. So I do like one lap, two lap, three lap, four lap, three lap, two lap, one lap. And that was it done on a Tuesday. I might meet someone for a five mile run on the Thursday in the club. And then I did a, a short kind of fartlek session again on a Saturday. So that was it. I was doing three days a week, but I was also playing two and three matches on a weekend and soccer training during the week. So like, you were, I was fit enough from the other sports as it was. Um, and then I suppose when I got um, John Downs as my next coach and I kind of started to kind of up the mileage, but like I was, John will tell you himself, I was a lazy athlete back in the day and I'd kind of, I wouldn't do all my runs. I'd say, I'd say if I had seven runs in a week, I might've done four or five of them and some weeks I might not even done any or I might've jogged with my granny as they'd often say. Um, so, so I kind of lack, I'm, I'm the type, when I, got it, when I get into things, I get into things and I found it hard because you were, 
putting other sports to the side and I enjoyed my soccer and my Gaelic. And when you're that age, it's, it's hard to kind of be told, look, you kind of have to give these up. And in hindsight, looking back, they're right. But I suppose I'd only taken the sport up in such late terms that I felt, Jesus, this is all, all of a sudden, like, whereas it might be different for someone that's running from under 10 and 11. Um, but yeah, I suppose then it was, like with Jerry, it was always that you need to up your miles, you need to up your miles. But he was all, he was very cautious with me because he knew I wasn't really doing too much anyway. So I'd say for the first couple of years, when it was Jerry, I was only doing 60 mile a week, if even. And now like we're regularly hitting the 1900, which is where I need to be because long term, like I'd be going up to half marathon, the marathon full time. So um, I'm just starting to get the base right now. So that at least when I do want to up the marathon, I'm only up in the pace rather than up in the miles. So Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and, and obviously, we, we've talked about miles, we've talked about frequency of training, you know, perhaps uh, three, starting off at three days a week and then perhaps uh, up to six or seven days a week when you were working with John Downs. And, and now I expect you, you're probably doing somewhere between seven and ten sessions per week. Um, and are they, are they all running? Have they always been running? Or, or have you worked on other things, you know, particularly in terms of strength and conditioning, stretching? No, I'm kind of, I, the gas thing is I, I tried the strength and conditioning and personally for me, like biomechanically, thankfully I'm, I'm fairly blessed. I don't get hurt and I run quite smooth anyway, or so, or so I'm told. But um, yeah, the, the strength and conditioning's never really been, I've tried it a couple of times, never really worked. We've actually, myself and Emma recently have just started doing Pilates classes. I actually find that quite, quite nice because we've actually the flat bed here we rent um so it's handy because you can do it in your house it takes 40 minutes or whatever it's not really too too strenuous and stuff like that but no like apart from that like i like even i get an off day with jerry every week but for the off day is still a 30 minute run so like five days a week i have the two runs and then i have just one run the other two days so that's what 10 12 sessions 12 run sessions a week like so um to be honest i wouldn't have the energy sure like that we're working full time as well and we have the two kids as well so Trying to fit everything in is impossible. So look, I think I've ticked the most important by getting the miles in and getting the diet right. And sure, you now with the, the plateaus, I suppose it's a, a form of strength and addition, I suppose, without the weights. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and agreed. And, and uh, th there's lots of people that have followed uh, a similar plan to yourself and done very well off it. But uh, I was just kind of uh, um, just trying to see what other things you do now. Obviously, the, the plant is there. Uh, obviously, as, as a parent and... Uh, a uh, full-time work, you've certainly got your, your hands full. And I think one of the um, things we said um, uh, before we started today is, is that it's good in the sense that it organises your windows of opportunity for training. Oh, big time. Like, I, I live off a structure. I tried the full-time running back when I was younger and I fell to pieces. Like, I'd stay in bed way too late and you'd be going to bed too late as well and you wouldn't get some double runs done. And I think having the focus that, like, we're up, the alarm set for six o'clock in the morning, out for the run, get the kids ready, off the child mind, and you're back. And the two of us then have to run in the evening. So it's a better than wiggling things between the kids going to bed. So like, there isn't, look from seven on, yeah, we might have a bit of time to do whatever else we want to, but you don't want to be out running or, or doing sessions at that hour and stuff like that. So um, we found a nice balance that's working for us, which is great. Good, good, good. And um, physiology, I mean, you said you've got good biomechanics. Is that something that you've had? a biomechanical assessment or have you had physiological assessments on the VO2 max machine or whatever? No, I would have had VO2 so I couldn't even couldn't even tell you what they were to be honest now um Basher um because I kind of did them just to keep people happy. <laughs> I didn't predict <laughs> I don't yeah. the the scientific side I don't take too much notice of which look could be holding me back at times but I think half the time I think I'm better off because I listen to the body as well and yeah. I think look that's one of the main reasons I haven't been hurt and missed time and things like that. So um I think the way I'm the caveman approach, as they say, but no, just from general watching back on races and the way people would say my form is good and things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm kind of judging from that more than anything. No, and I think that, you know, that, that there's not, not, not a lot of argument with that. And certainly, you know, your biomechanics often look particularly good at the end, which is the business, uh, the business end of a race. And uh, that's where it counts the most. And if you can turn it on, you can turn it on. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's the thing, like the, one of the keys we work off, we don't, we don't do any speed work at all um it's all long tempos long runs you might have your 2400s in the middle of the summer but they're never they're never anything special they're 68 67s the odd one or two might be a little bit quicker but it's just because of the strength i'm lucky i i've always had the speed so i'm just lucky the fact that i'm so strong i can actually use the speed at the end whereas i see a lot of the lads and they do so much speed work and they'd hammer me over 200 meters but they just because they haven't got the other work done they can't utilize it at the end of a race yeah yeah that's, that's an important point it's an important point um, in, in terms of um, your, your training, you know, what do you find challenging in your training or what sessions do you find particularly hard? 
And and do you have any psychological ways of getting over them or uh, coping with them? You know what, it's gas. I wouldn't say I struggle with anything training wise. Um, I suppose the initial jump up to the mileage, I, I did find tough. Like I was constantly tired and stuff like that. But once I got into the routine of it, it's fine. And like like that, because it's simply simple training. It's nothing, it's nothing too strenuous. Um, I suppose a day Jerry might throw an extra rep into like a, an extra two mile loop into her tempo or something might kind of throw us a skewed the odd time. But look, that's more to test us mentally than anything to see see how how we are and stuff like that. But yeah, I wouldn't say there's anything I struggle with. Um, I like the longer stuff, even race wise, sessions wise, the longer the better. Um, I suppose if he was to throw like 10 or 12, 10 or 20, 200s or something at me at a bit slight quicker pace, I might be kind of like, oh, not really my comfort zone, but um, I still do. I'm the type look. If, if Jerry Gold told me to go jump in the lake and start running, I'd jump in the lake and start running then that kind of like, um, I, I trust the process that he's telling me the right thing. So I don't worry about it too much. And, and you said you found uh, up in the mileage a struggle initially. How did you all overcome that initial struggle with, 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 it, with the jumping mileage? Well, the first, the first couple of times that I actually tried to try this for the few weeks, like I did find I'd, I'd skip a couple of the morning runs and stuff because I was really tight and it'd be really sore. And I thought, Jesus, am I going to get hurt here? But I think it was more like that it was the psychological side that I was like, just get through it. It's a new thing. This should hurt. Mm-hmm. And like, I suppose if you're an athlete, like, well, I class myself because I, I stop before I get hurt. I don't, I don't miss time. Like, but I think because I was so used to kind of going, Jesus, this is sore. I'll back off a little bit so I don't get hurt. I was nearly afraid to push the boundary a little bit. But like it wasn't the type of pain that I was going to get hurt pain. It was just general fatigue. And sure, once I realized like I'll have this for a couple of weeks and it'll be fine, it was grand. And it was like that. It was the first time I ever cracked a 5K. Every time I get the 3K grand, I was gone and I'd break apart. Whereas then, like this in the runs, once I got past that two-week stage of doing up the mileage, it then just felt normal again. So um, I suppose you just have to trust it as well. Like if you have yeah. a, a coach there that's telling you to do something, you need to know, okay, well, he's not going to tell me to do something I can't do, or at least you're going to hope hope that's the case anyway gotcha gotcha and, and in terms of monitoring yourself i mean is it just purely off feel or do you take your resting heart rate um, no i couldn't just couldn't tell you what my heart rate is at all okay. um just purely and like that i've i have a garment but i don't really i'd say if i take three i don't even turn the watch on half the time like sure um so i'd say if i i time my session so i can give feedback to jerry and other than that like we know all the loops around here i know it's going to be between 60 or 70 minutes for the loop or 90 or, or two hours or whatever like so i don't really i get the run in and i get on with it and that's it yeah you sound like a dream athlete you know what i mean <laughs> if every athlete i coached was like you it'd be great and uh <laughs> just get on with it don't worry about it all right well look i i always think there's no point stressing about things and like I don't want to get caught up in this whole Strava business where I'm like, oh Jesus, I'm I'm 59 minutes and 40 seconds. I need to do my extra 20 seconds, or everyone will find out. If I do my loop and it ends up in a minute quicker than the last day, it doesn't matter because it's the same distance and it's the same feel and it's in a round. So I don't I don't quarrel over over a minute here and there, like as well. So um, and that's I just I just think if you don't get too stressed, really enjoy it, like so. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It's refreshing to hear that. It's refreshing. Um, looking back at, at your coaching process, I mean, you've mentioned three coaches that you've worked with. Um, do you want to just reflect on those and, and just share some of the positive aspects of uh, working with those coaches when you first started? Yeah, the, the thing about Willie, I think Willie was in, in one of the Olympic marathons one year. I could be wrong now, and people probably call me on that, but like he'd be he'd be the older generation. I'd say he's he's late seventies at this stage, if not older. So I was really, to be honest. I, he'd even say he probably wasn't coaching me so he was just throwing me in with a group of the, the young kids down there so it was kind of more like a group session more than anything and then I suppose John was the first like serious coach I would have had in the sense of like he'd be I'd be getting scheduled and I'd, I'd know in a week or two advance I actually went down and stayed in John's for a couple of months in Limerick with his family and things I got training up in the mountains um really enjoyed it but I just think I was in the wrong state like I was running really good times um at times and then I'd fade throughout the season and I think it was down to myself really because like that, sure, John was assuming I was doing the training he was saying, and I'd kind of skipped a few things. And I suppose, like, I was young, I was stupid. Um, so at least then, once I came to Jerry, I was kind of, I'd actually kind of packed in the sport before I came to Jerry. Um, and Dermot McDermott from here managed to drag me from AIT down to Dublin a couple of times to do one or two sessions, even though I didn't want to. And it's just kind of, I'll click back into gear then. So, like, Jerry has a great way of getting around you then to do what, to tell you what you should do and what's the right thing to do. And, like I know a lot of people give out about him, but you know what? Deep down, he he wants what's best for everyone, and I think a lot of people don't realise that as well. So I'm I'm very grateful for a lot of that. Sure. So, so in terms of um, leveling with you, in terms of 
speaking your language. It, it sounds oh, like yeah. Well, like, like Stephen, think, I, won't, I won't use the language Jerry used, but I remember the first day I turned down for a session and he knew I didn't want to be there. And he told me the lads were doing a six lap tempo. It's the loop is just under a mile that they use. And sure, I pulled up after three. I told him I had a sore calf, but sure, I just I wasn't bothered, like to be honest. And uh, he, uh, I'll just say he he just told me not to come back. That's all I'll tell you. He said. Um, so I was kind of like Jesus Christ. So I ended up coming back the following week, and I did maybe five of the six laps. He told you. He said, "I told you, stop wasting my time. Don't come down here." Sure, the third week I did the six laps. He told me I could stay. Like so, like <laughs> we've never had the conversation. I've never asked him to coach me. He's never said he's coaching me. So just kind of everything just clicked from that day. Like so he knew what way to get around me and still does. Like even if there's say if there's a race I'm not really pushed on doing, but if there's one I really want to do and he thinks it's not a great idea, he'll never shut it down. But he'll he'll say things that make me know, look, I'm not too keen on this. I don't maybe think it's the right idea. Yeah. Um and I think that's very important because like that, if if you've a coach who just willy nilly says, Oh, race this, or I just say I want to do this, I don't think it's gonna work out. So look at we have a very good balance. Jerry's the kind of old school kind of coach, I'm the old school kind of athlete. So it works very well. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's good. It, it looks like you know quality sounding board there, and obviously you're in at the cold face do, doing the work and uh, feeding back um, and, and letting him know where you're at so he can make those next decisions for you. And yeah, that's that's good. Quality, quality, quality. Um, yeah. Oh, but that's quality over quantity. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's getting the right balance, you know. Um, yeah. And, oh, big time. A lot of people spend a lot of time, you know, working on one side and not enough on the other and, uh, you know, wasting off a lot of time. But that's the good thing about having an experienced coach is that you can, uh, you know, learn from other people's mistakes rather than learn from your own. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And sure, Jerry always say that. He'd be like, oh, we did such and such a session and we were doing 60 seconds for the 400s. And he goes, but you're not going to ever do that. You don't need to. And like, that's the thing. He knew what held him back and knows what the kind of silly things they might have done back in the day were. So he, he really makes sure that we don't do that. Like, and even if he's a type as well, if he's there watching the session, if you are going too hard and say we 24 hunts, he'd pull you out after 15. He'd be like, you've gone hard enough. Good luck. Your session's over. Like, even though you'd still be fine, but he'd know like you've gone past the threshold here and you're just going to, you're going to do some damage. So like he'd just pull you out early, like, which is great. That's yeah. what we need, I suppose. Good coaching. I excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in terms of um, downtime activities, what do you do to relax? I mean, obviously by the sounds of it, you don't have time to relax. Yeah, well, it's it's tougher to relax now, I suppose, with the two kids. But um, I don't know. Look, do you know what? It's it's gas actually, because even with the balance on the weekends, like, well, I go run, Emer goes for the walk with the kids, and sure, that's for for about an hour. And likewise, then if the weather's good, you now look, we're unlucky at times as well. The weather's terrible, we don't get it. But we do a lot of walking with the kids and stuff like that. Um, I like to play golf. I only get to play once or twice a year though, so I can't wait until uh, maybe the running takes the backside in a few years, and I can start playing a bit more of that. Like, but no downtime really we might go into town for coffees and stuff like that or the odd walk that's about that's about it to be honest um i'm sure with the lockdown there's nothing to do which is great it's actually suited us to the ground in a sense because like that we've we've had plenty of time with the kids at home and um, it's time we we'll never get back with them so and, and you're working as a school teacher now is that right i'm a special needs assistant right okay so i work in a, in a an autism unit within the school so and, and you're, you're you're full-time in in the schools now Do yeah you're full-time yeah Right. And I just so that's very enjoyable. The, the day had been shortened or anything like that, but that's not happened. No, no, no. It's nine to nine to four every day. Well, a Friday we get a half day. We're finished at half one, right. um, but other than that, it's nine to four every day. So, go on. Excellent, excellent. Um, and what one final question? A bit of a random question here. Um, are there any? Uh, I mean, you mentioned golf, which uh, is interesting, uh, an interesting option. But in terms of athletics, are there any other events that you would like to have tried or? Perhaps still looking forward to trying. Well, well, there, there, there is one that I, I've told Jerry my eye is on to try, and he did say last year we might try it this year, but obviously it didn't work out with the way the year went. But uh, I'd love to try steeplechase. Um, I was born jumping things, so I actually think I'd be suited. I did one in the leagues straight after fifteen hundred because someone got hurt, but like I just trotted around, so it doesn't really count. Right. Um, but yeah, I told him before I finish on the track, I'm doing one steeple. That's and I didn't it. ask. That was the one thing I said to him. I said, this is the one I'm not going to ask. I'm making space to do one. So I don't know when it'll happen, but we'll wait and see. Well, I'll get you down to AIC. Just have got some mini hurdles there and we'll get you practicing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'd be the type I'd just go straight in without any practice. Well, well that, 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 <laughs> hope for the best. In, in fairness, I think Sean Tobin did that a couple of years ago. He did 8.53, but really I think he should have been running about 8.33. But I, I think he just fell into it and he thought, you know, 
to do it easily, but, but I think there is a bit of conditioning and the mobility. Oh, it'd definitely, it'd definitely be harder than I think it's going to be, but I don't think I'd want to nearly give away a season doing hurdle drills and stuff. I think I'd just, just have no. a lash and see what I would have done without putting too much emphasis on it. Because, yeah. look, I, I'll say I'll do it in an unimportant year, but sure, there's no such thing as an unimportant year because there's championships every year. So Absolutely. Um, it'll be hard to fit in which year is the, the least important out of the lot, I suppose. And all I would say to you, you know, with the steeplechase background, it, it's just do, you know, one or two little drills before every track session. You know, it only to take three to five minutes, but over the year, that was three to five minutes could make a big difference to you. Well, this is true. Yeah. And your conditioning. Um, not little and often, that's all it is. Little, little yeah. and often. It'll get you a long way. Yeah, but I so. suppose that's the only other one. I, I, I wouldn't really be keen on two others now. To be, no, I'm going to go up to Marathon eventually, so there's no point saying I'd like to try it because I know I'm going to. Um, but yeah, that'd be the one that people mightn't think that I'd ever be interested in, but it's one I'd, I'd still definitely have a whack at at some stage. Yeah. Well, I certainly think, you know, I mean, somebody like Brian Fay, he's got the speed and he's, uh, he's got the plyometric movement that, that we can see, but he hasn't got the mobility and he's, uh, or not yet, it might be he's working Not yet, the, exactly, not yet. I'd say, I'd say he'll come out and do it, especially after he ran a, a good 5k time trial there um, a few weeks ago, well, probably a month ago at this stage. So look, if he gets any sort of... Uh, more agile over those barriers, he'll, he'll get a good time out of it, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. And then my brown Irish track card might go, but then uh, who knows? It oh, well, it's bound track. to go at some stage. It's, it's been there a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. For sure. Um, right. Um, John, I've, I've asked all my questions. I don't know if you wanted uh, to say on these things. Uh, are there any questions that you want me to find the answers for? But I guess uh, you've got your coaches there or. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put you under pressure like that, Basher, you know. <laughs> Your job cut out for you. Well, um, I just no, thought I'm in the stage. I don't need to know any, any answers to anything, which is great. Yeah. I've been grilling you. I just thought uh, I'll just turn the tables and give you a chance to uh, have a pop. <laughs> but, uh, I, could, I, I could have put you on the spot there. No. All right. Well, uh, thanks ever so much. Um, I'm just going to pause no now. And... Um,